yes. Here he is, my mortal enemy. You have seen him, that shirtless walrus? <laughs> Ian Grushka. I figured I'd start a show with this shit. I was talking to shit about him last time. It's my impression of the drummer. Look like a fool, yes I do. Now, if you don't remember, this was NFG when they finally kind of hit. Uh, they were kind of in the mainstream with that one album that had a hit or miss on it. What was it, Stay Gold or something like that? Staying Gold. Who knows what it was called? But, you know, they exploded into this. Listen to it. It's actually not, not too bad of a song. And I was thinking about this shit the other day. How did this music even get popular? Well, I got, I'm just trying to... This shit started to get played on the radio. If it, I mean, if it wouldn't... If it wouldn't have been for, like, the success of Fallout Boy, a lot of the shit might not have even got heard at all. I mean, what was it, Panic at the Disco? I mean, Pete Wentz, wasn't he over them? Did he sign that band because they sound like Fallout Boy? That's how you know you made it. It's kind of like that Pearl Jam treatment everybody got back in the 90s. But this was the NFG. Woo! This is Josh! Right, Byron. I play my PlayStation 2, dude. Look at that old ass brick and that's fucking PlayStation 2. <laughs> I know we've watched this like three times already, but come on. PlayStation! PlayStation! Fuck, I'll take my drumstick. God dang, bro. You got one, drink it? You got one, smoke it? You got me as an NFG CD? Play that shit, boy! Look at this fat ass. Going for the pizza. I'm just joking. I don't think so. I actually like this guy. He was always one of the more likable ones to think. But, man, when I say I challenge you to a face-off, a base-off, face-off, whatever the fuck I said, dude, you better get ready. Get in Put the pizza down. You need to go to Thin Crust, brother. Let's go back to it. I'm sorry I keep going back. Let's put it out there. Josh and fucking Ian Grush. I'll deliver a pizza to him through Grubhub. And then challenge him. You're going down, boy. Bye. <laughs> hey, boy. Oh, my God. This music. Woo! I know I said it in the last time. But come on, dude. God, typical video girl. <laughs> I remember there was like this subsection of people up there. And there's like uh, the lead singer of this Jordan Pundinky or whatever his name is. What is that, Polish? Is that a Polish name? But anyways, Jordan... Jordan kind of looked like uh, this guy. Kind of Quentin Tarantino-esque. I remember a lot of people saying that shit back in the day. Someone said, I look like him. What the fuck, bro? <laughs> Maybe. I think I'm a lot uglier than this guy, but you know, who said that? <laughs> now, this song is interesting. Listen to... Oh, you see that one guy right there. The, uh, Chad, him. Yes, the ladies' man of the group. Now, th there's a story, actually, with him and uh, Max Bemis of Say Anything. Something to do with Max's wife, who might have been before she was Mrs. Bemis. Mrs. Say Anything might have been with this, uh, this cat right here. Look at him. My name is Chad. Oh, this is so hilarious. Can't believe I'm listening to all of He's going to have to have all those bouncers when I find his ass. Oh, what? Now, dude, now, if I remember right, I totally forgot about this guy. The guy that looks like one of them Pops action figures or whatever they're called. Uh, it's trying to Steve Klein or some bullshit. Very interesting. I don't remember seeing Steve Klein in the last video that was, what, a month old to stay a while. He wasn't in it, if I'm not mistaken. He wasn't in it. So, I mean, uh, is he dead? I, I don't... Hopefully he's not dead. He's got to see Ian get his ass beat too by me! <laughs> oh, my God. Like I said, drink it if you got it. You're going to have to drink it to get through this shit. All right? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, all these fucking seniors and shit, too. Oh, this is pop-punk scene. Oh, he's... And this was more of a, this was like a fucking 
a mainstream movement. This shit got adopted to the mainstream for that 2002-ish, 2006 period or whatever it was. But I, what the fuck was I even saying? But yeah, these moves, man. These erratic herky jerk moves. <laughs> erratic herky jerky moves. Such a herky jerky. There ought to be a beef jerky company called Herky Jerky. But anyways, these herky jerky movements of these singers and these pop punk guys, that, that was kind of uh, atypical for it. I don't think... Uh, every fucking pop punk vocalist, I, I, I'm not too sure why, but every one of them wanted to be kind of uh, jokey. You know what I'm saying? It was always kind of like... I kind of get the same vibe with uh, RHCP Anthony Kiedis. You know what I'm saying? Is it because they're not too confident with their... Uh, their musical ability is singing or, or whatnot. They feel like they have to amplify themselves when they're on stage with this bullshit blah, 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 and all this stuff. Uh, really, the last front man that I remember seeing from this genre, like I said, that might have had any uh, sense of, well, he still yeah, he had the concept, but he still was guilty of doing things like this, but it was actually cool, was the main man, Adam Lazar, of Taking Back Sunday. <laughs> There's probably 15 million shots of the the, the, the pink scrape up the neck. What do you think? He got one Quentin Tarantino. I directed. That is what I was talking about. That movement. I know that was a visual effect. I mean, it's pretty cool. Ah, this part was always cool. This these harmonies right here. Let's see if I can turn it. Dude, I mean, God, like I said, the faces that you guys make. I'm not trying to say you ugly, because, uh, well, hey, I call myself ugly, you know, fugly, people say I look like you, but, dude, you look like you're letting your dog, uh, eat peanut butter at your asshole! Look at that face! Can't you see old Rover? Ah, come on, Rover, come on over! <laughs> That's disturbing. Whoever does that is sick. Actually, no joke. This is going to sound crazy as fuck. But we've all done stuff that we regret as teenagers. I, of course not, because I had the uh, sense of, dude, that's pretty fucked up. I don't even want to tell the story, but the story is there was once a dude who put a cheese it in a very disturbing place and let his dog into the room. <laughs> We saw one shit. <laughs> now you remember what I said earlier. I was talking about this bullshit. This fucking song. Oh yeah, the Steve Klein guy. That's the thing I wanted to get in. We'll have to look into that. We'll have to look into the whole Steve Klein, the rhythm guitar. I think he was a rhythm guitar player. Possibly. There's no way that he could have been the lead. That Chad Everett. What's this thing? Chad Gilbert. Too much of an egomaniac to ever let anyone upstage him. And purposely, I think that he hired uh, your average looking Joes to be in his band. He might have been the original member. I need to look up this shit because that's a theory I got. And like I said, he, he might have did some fucked up shit to Max Bemis' wife instead of say anything. <laughs> Cool. He's always watchable. But yeah, this guy. Not him. Him! Not him! No, not him! Now, where is he? He was never in the band to begin with, I guess. Was he just a... a, a there he is. He's a cardboard cutter. Beat his ass! Dude, that looks terrible. What if they just ripped him apart? And that Ian. Always eating something. Dude, you about to be eating my fucking fist, Ian. Sign the papers, man. I'm putting them out there. The challenge is out there. But I wanted to show y'all. Y'all might not. Y'all might not even give a fuck about newfound glory and this 2004 bullshit, like I'm into it. But that newfound glory, uh, that song, that dude, it sounded just like another fucking band song. And I, dude, I know I get it. Pop punk's got the fucking D A G. 
Let's play the chords. Hey man, play those chords. Do 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 Play that over and over again, alright? That's all we can do. We just know about three chords. Most people know three that's all you need anyways, three chords guitar. Uh but listen. Alright. They they uh there was this other band. Y'all might actually not have heard of them. And I speak I'm gonna uh take it back Sunday early. Take it back Sunday. To get Taking Back Sunday's respect when they were blowing up on the mainstream charts and all that bullshit, selling out. Actually, Halsey was in their crowd. Isn't that crazy? Like that, I think Halsey, Halsey, whatever the fuck her name is. That fine ass fucking bitch. <laughs> Sorry. But yeah, that fine ass woman, she was a big fan of Adam Lazar. If I remember right, I read that somewhere that she seen Taking Back Sunday live and it was inspiring to her because, yes, he was charismatic as fuck. The dude would swing a microphone around his head. And then the wire just gets shorter and shorter till it smacks him in his fucking face. I don't think it ever did that. But that's just some of the moves he did. It's, it's actually interesting to see. But Take It Back Sunday repped this band that I'm about to show you. And they had very similar music to that New Found Glory bullshit. I think it was North Star. Actually an Alabama band. Let's give it up for an Alabama pop punk band. Well, or maybe an art rock band. But isn't that crazy? That almost seems something... Uh, you, when you think of Alabama, you think of... Uh, Free Bird! Whatever you hear in fucking every cover band's audience, everywhere you go. This was the CD they had. I, don't, I think these guys only had like two CDs. Pollyanna. But the song, I'm trying to remember what the fuck it was called. Hell, maybe it was called Pollyanna. I don't really fucking remember. Let's listen to it. Is a new type you gotta play an ad first, though. prices primarily on how you drive. Damn! <laughs> Root! <laughs> root insurance company. Was your pussy destroyed by a giant root? That's what my dad calls a dick. I always thought that was strange. It's taking forever to load. Oh, it wants me to install something. Hell no, I'm not installing shit! Okay, actually, something genuinely, <laughs> genuinely may be wrong. But anyways, like I was saying, take it back Sunday, they ripped these guys. And I, I hope this is the fucking song. But uh, it, to me, it always sounded so similar to Newfound Glory's bullshit. I, I can't remember which one came first. Uh, was it this or that? But, okay, we're going to find another one because this is just taking forever. But, yeah, they had so... Actually, when I looked up this North Star, I'm seeing all kinds of shit that just taking me back. Thursday, a band I forgot about. Because probably they were named Thursday. I mean... Uh, why would you name your band Th Thursday? Thursday is a m remembrance. Hey, Friday's just around the bend. Uh, it's not Friday yet. Thursday, there's something, there's some hope to look forward to. But why the fuck would you name your band Thursday? Uh, and, and where did they go? That was another fucking... Let's just try this again. I, it's got to be... Oh, here's the full album. This wasn't the song. Okay, actually, it was Pollyanna. Thank you, New Family. That sounds like some jawbreaker. Actually, I'm going to listen to this whole damn CD. Okay, my bad. I was talking all through that. Thing. Like I said, North Star, this was a band, the Alabama band, that the New Jersey fucking Yankees, fucking Adam Lazar and all them, that they fucking loved. Maybe, I don't say this, uh, maybe even stole their sound. Okay, now let's just listen to some of this shit, too. Like I said, this kind of sounded like... Uh, I know what you're saying. Every one of these artists kind of borrowed from each other. But listen to this shit. Listen to the lyrics. So you see a big turn of events from Adam Azar. I mean, he might have lost John Nolan, too. You know, on that second album. This shit sounds fire, bro. Oh, shit. This dude's voice always gave me chills. Chemical ass fly around like drama. Now, tell me, for a band that came out of Alabama, would you expect anything more than big wheels keep on turning? I'm a 
dumbass and it's true. Now, no offense to fucking Leonard Skinner. Actually, Leonard Skinner, an overrated man, but also at the same time, underrated. I don't know how that's even possible. But uh, Leonard Skinner weren't, weren't, weren't bad at all. But would you expect this out of like some kind of fucking hicks from Alabama? You know, and I say that, I mean, they are the armpit of Georgia, where I'm from. And actually, I'm almost in Alabama. So, hey, I'm right there with you, boys. I would have been in the crowd. This part here, listen. Oh. Now that's really fucking cool, man. Right, they go to a fucking basic ass course and shit like that. But the dude's melodies. I think his name was Nick Torres. And he's probably in some band now. Probably a singer songwriter somewhere. Kind of like the guy from the starting line. Dude, I could just do this show forever because pretty much this whole. This show could be like finding a, an alternative press from 2006. You know? But the dude, what a, I, this is really what I wanted to show you. Sorry, man. I've got off. I said, that's that's the worst thing about me being a host. Is I don't... I'm fucking terrible, and I apologize. I really, I, I really do. But this is the song that sounded like Newfound Glories, My Friends Over You. If we have to hear them back-to-back, -back, we will. Just listen to this intro. And if for some reason it never wants to play. Come on! Can you see a little bit? I think it's that part, man. And it might be that lead. Alright, let's hear that new fan lord. Now we God. The vocals of this guy, man. I need to find him. He can be in my corner when I beat Ian Grushka's ass with the bass. Alright, here, here we go. This isn't what I was talking about, but this is an ad, of course. Like I said, I need to get YouTube rich. Sorry! However you go back, Walmart's got your back. Oh, up. Almost the same goddamn song. I want to go back and hear it. I mean, uh, Jordan Pundit, Quentin Tarantino's uh, cousin or whatever. Dude, he can't compare... I mean, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. They would have never found the success they did, you know, had it not been for uh, this guy's vocal style, which this guy's vocal style was very in line with the genre style of music, but he also had a little something else. But that's Nick Torrey's. I mean, just listen to this. Let me play it back. It won't play back. What the fuck? Oh, there we go. My bad. Your host is a dumbass. I'm drunk off your kiss. <laughs> if you think this is better than this too. I don't know, I hear I hear music and everyone's music. It's a fucking curse. You can't enjoy one damn thing. Because you're like, yeah, this kind of sounds like this. When I watch a movie, yeah, this is kinda of like that movie. That's so fucking petty to be, and it's something I despise about myself because it's totally fucking ruined my fucking enjoyment for any goddamn thing. I need to fucking back away from that shit, all right? No one likes an art snob. And how could you be an art snob to this genre? God, kill yourself, ugly! <laughs> Woo! Damn! Oh, Ooh. This might sound gay as fuck, but this guy's voice is fucking kind of sexy. Dude. Oh, dude. My dick just moved, okay? Sorry to fucking tell you with that. Now, that's probably the only man's voice who uh, has that effect on me. So, is that gay? Maybe a little bit. I don't know. <laughs> but
But I think it stops at the voice, is all I'm trying to say. Dude, I just seen some ad for black toothpaste. The fuck? Oh, here's another fucking... Here, no effects. Y'all remember these guys? These, these were the old, you know, punk rockers. The guys that was doing shit in the 80s that, uh... You had to say you liked, or no one would fucking uh, appreciate you. No effect. I listen to no effects. Shut the fuck up. Oh, I got some Fat Records. Dude. Dude, the only fucking thing that came out of uh, Fat Records that was worth a fuck was damn Propaganda. Propaganda was one of my favorites. And it, it hit me at that time, too. Dude, when I was just, I was a fucking lunatic. Back in my fucking freshman, sophomore year, I remember I had a propaganda shirt and a teacher asked me, hey, what's that mean? When the, the shirt, it was uh, the album cover of Today's Empire's Tomorrow's Ashes or something like that. Anyways, I had that shit. And uh, the burnt American flag was on it. And, you know, 9-11 had, like, happened, you know, months prior or whatever, some bullshit like that. I just remember the teacher pulling me to the side. Hey, what's this supposed to mean? I don't fucking know it's a damn album cover, bro. What do you think I'm fucking pro 9-11? What's wrong with you? I don't know. Very, very strange. What am I listening to? Oh, yeah, no effects. All these goddamn ads, bro. The decline. This is some no effects. This was some... I remember everybody's talking about this. But at the same time, I don't think a damn soul genuinely liked them. I could be wrong. I mean, there's, I'm not saying there's not a good no effect song. Because that would be stupid. If you was going to listen to some bullshit like this, this is some elementary style fucking, kind of, what, what was that, hate breed or something like that. This was like, dude, I, I kind of like, I, I kind of like my brother's Judas Priest records, but uh, it's not gay enough for me. Oh, no offense is the man for you, buddy. <laughs> Actually, that kind of sounds like some propaganda. A little bit. <laughs> God, it is so terrible. I mean, it's like... Uh, at the same time, I, I just really can't see how people even get into this genre of music. It, it seems like you would evolve from this. This should be the first shit you're learning how to play. A lot of people learn how to play Smoke on the Water, blah, 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 and all that bullshit. And you know what? I need to get a damn musician on the damn show so I can just talk to them, apparently. But, I mean, this shit is just so elementary. Why would you fucking... How could you keep subjecting yourself to this? This is, this is music you cut your teeth to. You know, to get to what you finally like. And what's sad, this shit, I don't know when it came out. Let's see if I can find it on these fucking descriptions. I, I don't think it came out five years ago. It was obviously uploaded five years ago. That makes me really want to listen to propaganda. Propaganda. <laughs> I can barely talk, man. I'm getting a little uh, lead-tongued over here. Uh, fuck. Propaganda was one of my favorite bands. And it mainly, mainly for... And I'm not saying they didn't have any good songs uh, in the, the late 80s piece. But that first one, man, How to Clean Everything. One where they had still had John K. Sampson. I think that was his name, the bass player. That dude brought a whole level. They were definitely ahead of the fucking time. Okay? Hang on, let me see if I can find some shit. Stick the fucking flag up your ass. This was a this was a propaganda song. Stick the fucking flag up your ass. These guys were Canadian, by the way. Can't get that all this shit. I must be there. My father told me science gives out to resist. You can talk all right, you gotta keep everything on these days. 
Now that's what I liked about fucking propaganda. The, the sound is kind of the same as that no effect, no effect. But you know, no effects had these fucking rhyme schemes that were just like said, bed. You know, these very simple fucking uh, a a b b. And by that I mean like each word rhymes with itself. You said I'd rather be dead. Are you gonna cut with me or cut it off my head? Fucking lame, dude. Okay, I expected a little bit more, and that's one thing I can say. It's, uh... <laughs> Shit, I just saw something distracting me. I apologize. But, uh, yeah, I mean, the, even as, like, a youth, I, I was very appreciative of, uh, strong lyrics, you know, and stuff like that. Just something that was a little bit more basic. That, that was all. When, even when I was fucking, like, uh, dude, ten years old, I could listen to songs on the radio, and I already knew... You know, with the structure of the song was going, I could already tell mainly because uh, it was so basic that even a ten-year-old could have wrote your bullshit. I knew the rhyme schemes. I knew what would rhyme with blue. Give me a break, okay? You gotta, you gotta do a little bit better. Propaganda did a little bit better, and that's why I, I think that I appreciated these guys. <laughs> more. But wait a minute, Dad. <laughs> Did you actually say freedom? Well, if you're dumb enough to vote, you're fucking dumb enough to believe them. <laughs> kind of, kind of blink 182 a little bit there. I, I hear a little DeLong in that. What's up with DeLong now? Have you seen him? I, the last time I saw it was on the Joe Rogan shit. And I know blink 182 still around. Now, I mean, you had a big part in, <laughs> to do with that band. You don't want to tour... With Mark Hoppus and uh, Travis Barker, your boys. Well, I guess it never really mattered because Travis Barker was uh, an implemented person anyway. Who was it? The Scott. I can't remember what his last name, but Scott. Scott was the original drummer of that. And he had a very basic fucking uh, punk drum sound. And why wasn't that good enough for you? You know? I mean, you already had the fucking melodies timed a lot. You keep Scott involved, huh? But yeah, prop, uh, propaganda. I fucking dug a lot of it. And I think a lot of it had to do with like the lyrics and stuff like that. Here's actually the full album. This so is the one I have. Spice that I Get the fuck off of here. Right away and the reason it's so depressing. I have to fucking... But yeah, I had to sell it. And if I remember right, this shit came from Fat Records. No effects. Fat Mike. Actually, I want to get some volume on this. This, this is some old fucking 90s production. And it's a little... I just pulled out this BBC of the remote. How embarrassing is that? <laughs> well, we refuse to be no more. A faded sticker on a skateboard. <laughs> I think that's how it goes. <laughs> My bad. I'm trying to figure out. Oh, this is it. This is a song that I really liked. And this is this kind of showed off the, uh, uh, like I said, John K. Sampson, probably one of my favorite parts of the band. Uh, while he was in this band, I guess he just for the love of music, because he couldn't find another band, they would probably let him sing because his voice is not, you know, definitely like, hey, let's put you in front of the stage. <laughs> Excuse me. But what's this same showdown song? John Sampson, this whole song, uh... Uh, just listen to it. The lyrics are something totally different. Oh, like I said, they're typical propaganda bullshit. Let's see. The show. That's, that's pretty tight right there, I will say. I keep doing the wrong fucking button. God dang, I keep hitting the wrong button. Okay, here we go. Just take a break, right? We'll sit back and relax. I do not require a gift for freedoms of speech, cuz I never asked to be a citizen. I never have and never will pledge allegiance. Very cool, man. I mean, uh, the lyrics, 
Dude, you're a fucking poser, first of all. I never said and I never will pledge allegiance. You're a fucking Canadian. Of course you wouldn't. Dude, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Okay, now this is John K. Sampson right here. He comes to the second part. Oh, actually, I gotta give this more volume. I gotta figure out. Let me get the BBC out. <laughs> Let me get the BBC out. And turn this bitch up. This actually might be extremely loud, so I don't know how the audio's level are. Uh, so I apologize if this is fucking, uh, what do you call it? I don't know much about it. I'm too stupid to say, but I'm gonna use the word machu later. Because it sounds, uh, correct. But anyways, this is John K. Sampson coming in. All right, now you heard the other guy. I can't remember his fucking name. He wasn't worth remembering. All right, you put out like, what, 10 albums? I never fucking knew your name. John K. Sampson was the heart of this band. When he left, dude, I so did mine. All right. Let's just hear it in time. What the fuck, dude? Root is a okay, I don't fuck shit up. That bases prices primarily on how you drive. But anyways, what I'm saying, John K. Sampson, let me find it. This song, listen to the other guy, which, I mean, he don't sound bad to hear at all. I mean, I think it's just cool with that fucking, the little drum beat. Come on, damn it! See, I don't know what's going on my fucking shit. It's just frozen on one. Connected to airplay. Fucking AT&T, I swear, dude. AT&T needs to fucking be, uh, anal rape with a cell phone tower. This fucking shit sucks! Oh my god, dude. This is so fucking embarrassing. But John K. Sampson, like I said, you hear the other guy singing. I I'll have to qu quit doing that. I'm sorry, gotta look at Root forever. Okay? But yeah, John K. Sampson, man, listen to the other guy's vocal style, which is, you know, your typical punk. Nothing wrong with his voice in that typical punch. Huh? John K. Sampson. Never will pledge allegiance. Oh, my God. Okay, listen to this first of all, okay? Now you got propaganda talking about, I won't pledge allegiance to the flag. Something about his dad in that first song or some bullshit. You know, your typical fucking political shit. Which is weird. Let's fucking criticize America. Like I said, you're from fucking Canada, dude. John K. Sampson kind of had it figured out. He's like, listen, I'm more of an emotional guy. I'm more into this emo scene. Uh, people aren't, you know, kicking down the doors to listen to guys like The Promise Ring anymore. You know, maybe a little bit of jawbreaker, but you know, something's going on with him too. So maybe I can cut my teeth in this fucking propaganda. But he's actually got a new band called The Weaker Dance. I think they're still around. Propaganda, I'm not, I'm not too sure about. But listen to this, it's the poeticness of this. Even, you know, as a fucking sophomore, like I said, this is the shit I appreciate. Waking up each morning with confusion in my eyes. The sun is biting through to say hello. I think that's what he said. <laughs> Now, isn't that perfect? Just like these lyrics in that. Isn't this just perfect for a guy in fucking, you know, a high school creative writing class? I mean, this is, this is right up your shit that you would submit every Friday to your fucking... <laughs> to Mr. Oliver. <laughs> This song just sticks out from everything else in their catalog, and it's mainly because, like I said, Samson. Samson, I. Now, like I said, there's a part in here, man. And it totally kind of... Uh, punk's very basic and all this bullshit. They had these little time signatures. This is how they tricked you. This is how they fucking, you know, built you up to the emotional. You know, and most of the time, it, the, 
all this stuff became through uh, musical release. Now, it was never a lyrical release, but yeah, god dang, when these two elements combined, you know, the musical and the fucking lyrical, fucking, uh, god dang, bro. I'll shut up. I'm just gonna listen to it. <laughs> With the greenest eyes. Oh, shit. First time you have kissed. Our quiet, softest sighs. Song for all of those who shot and missed. That's fucking pretty awesome, man. As you can tell early on, actually, I was in introduced to this band by a skateboarder. Actually, I think I might have heard him before the skateboarder, but I remember he had a propaganda sticker on his on his bumper and shit like that. I remember one dude telling me, why are you hanging out with him? He's a candy head. <laughs> what the fuck is a candy head? I think I actually said that. What? <laughs> yeah, he likes E, dude. I'm like, man, we're in eighth grade. What the fuck are you telling me? I like this guy's voice, so. Who see through the lies are quickly gagged and bound. Ambition realized. Tear the whole fucking thing down. <laughs> How fucking incredible was that? I mean, uh, I, I want to say this album might have came out in 1993. I could be wrong. Actually, I want to look that up. <laughs> Did this fucking shit come out in 1993 or what? But I mean, dude, they had it. They had it figured out. I mean, they probably could have been way more than this punk band, this No Effects, Fat, Matt, Fat Mike, whatever his fucking name was. You know, they could have been way more than that. And you could really tell in the lyrics. Not even John K. Stanson part, but this other guy. I can't remember his fucking name. All right. Fuck, what was I even looking for? I can't even fucking remember. Uh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, when did this album come out? How to clean everything. Propaganda. Let me fucking type. I can't fucking type, yo. <laughs> Hang on, I have to pick my phone up. How to... How to clean everything. I gotta see when this shit came out. Because, dude, they had... They might even had their finger on the pulse of this whole fucking pop-punk movement. And they didn't even realize it. This John K. Sampson guy, he said, I wanted to go emo. Even he didn't realize it. He wanted to go straight fucking emo. You know what I'm saying? With the weaker dance. This fucking folky kind of shit. Uh, I remember when they, they said he, they kicked him. Well, he didn't get kicked. He left the band, really. Because <laughs> he was tired of getting chased by skinheads, which I didn't know was a problem. But I've heard Gavin McInnes talk about it, too. And apparently, uh, <laughs> this, this punk scene in Canada was always spying the skinheads. How could uh, anything be so fucking interesting? <laughs> I have no clue. Yeah, 1993. This album came out May 31st, 1993 on Fat Records. In February. I don't record. Okay, it was recorded if it were released May 31st. Very interesting, bro. Uh, here, Here's a... Uh, this is actually the... Uh, I don't know if you can see that. This was the album cover of the shirt I had. That the teacher was asking about. You can barely see that shit. This phone wants to be a motherfucker. Look at that. You can barely see it. What is that, mustard? What is that supposed to mean? Very pixelated. I'm sorry you can't fucking tell. But yeah, that was what drew the ire of my chemistry teacher. Or whatever the fuck, science teacher. I can't remember who it was. 
There is a song that I want to hear. Sexist, racist, homophobes. There's actually a lot of shit I need to get to. I need to move on from Robin Green. I just spent way too long on this uh, segment that I've lost all fucking steam. <laughs> we find the steam. Let's see. Sexist, racist, homophobes. <laughs> it's so crazy. The only good fascist is a dead fashion. Now, this was a song. This is kind of... Oh, shit! Kind of sounds a little bit of Primus right here. Swastikas and clan robes. Woo! Sexist, racist, homophobe. I love this song, bro. Asians and hammer skins. my nuts on your Nazi chins. Just what exactly are the great historical accomplishments of your race? That actually just reminds me. <laughs> I love a man in uniform! The skateboarder guy that I think introduced me to him, we was talking about propaganda or whatever like that. Uh, yeah, I think they might be gay, though. <laughs> I just remember hearing that shit. I love a man in uniform! Who cares if they were gay? Who gives a fuck if anyone's fucking gay? Why can't it have anything to do with you? Dude, I, I celebrate the fact that there's more gay dudes out there. And it's mainly because I got less competition in the fucking mating pool. You know what I'm saying? Damn, don't you wish everyone was gay? Because I'm ugly as fuck. You think I'm going to get fucked? No, nah, man, I'd rather have these good-looking dudes uh, want to fuck other good-looking dudes. That's how the world needs to work. Sexist, racist, homophobes! This one's for the master race! Five brother roses, you're right by our face! Oh my god, dude. Uh, that, that was a fantastic... That's a great fucking little song. That That is the perfect, uh, perfect quintessential punk song that you ever hear. The length is short. Alright, the message is deep. Now, this is what true punk is all about. You know, not this other shit that I'm about to fucking force upon you. No, I just saw play some NFG and all that bullshit. Oh, speaking of NFG, that's what I wanted to get into. I, I gotta figure out... Okay, we was talking about it earlier. What the fuck happened to that goddamn fucking guitar player? I want to say his name was Steve Klein. Let me see if I can get something pulled up here. You always gotta ask Reddit, because... Something's dropping. Shit, something's falling around me. Oh what? Oh my god. Yes, dude. I already started looking. Thank you. Sometimes I'm ahead of myself. Sometimes I got some prep coming up. All right, this is from Pop Punkers. <laughs> oh, is this the Reddit Pop Punkers? Okay. Who's the fucking user? I, I don't know. I don't know too much about this Reddit shit. Whatever happened with Steve Klein? I was right. Whatever happened to Steve Klein? Uh. Trial? Oh, a trial? Holy shit! Hang on one second, bro. Hold the fucking phone! Now, was he saying trial? Obviously, he's not talking about, hey, let's trial him out as a guitar player. Because he was in the band as, from as far as I can remember. Uh, always in the band, if I remember correct. Or at least in what they have out in video. Uh, a trial. That, that makes me think that this guy got convicted! Of some bullshit. I don't know. God dang, bro. Let's listen to this. All right, fuck. Where's my thing? Haven't heard a thing from about it in 10 years. Oh, wait. No, no. I don't know what I'm saying. I'm drunk as fuck. Sorry. In years. Not 10 years. In years. From what I remember, he had faced some serious accusations. I always kind of thought he got the short end of the stick. I mean, it seemed like it might be a case of the girl he was chatting with said she was over 18, since that's a pre Wesley kit for most sites. Fuck. Sounds like the fucking pedo excuse from the guy on the crime or whatever. On the damn fucking, uh, what, the, the Creep Catchers fucking show I did. 
you got to be over 18 to use this app. I think that never works. <laughs> Was that your defense, Steve Klein? Uh, you got to be over 18 since that's a prerequisite for using these sites. I could definitely be wrong, though. Can't find any new articles online about whatever ended up happening. So there's 17 comments to this. Let's actually see what's going on. Dude is still active on Twitter. Well, as of 2-4-18.